Yesterday we talked about cardiac tamponade and what happens when blood starts to fill the pericardial sac. Well, we usually look for signs and symptoms that are consistent with Beck's triad. Let's talk about it. Okay, so Beck's triad is consistent of hypotension, muffled heart sounds, and JVD. Now, why do we see that? Well, first off, with muffled heart sounds, it makes sense, because if the fluid is filled around the sac, and I try and listen to heart sounds, I'm going to be trying to listen to something through water. That's like trying to talk underwater. It's very muffled and difficult to hear. So that's kind of how muffled heart sounds comes to be when it comes to cardiac tamponade. Now, JVD is all due to the backup of pressure, because that heart is now being squeezed. It can't expand and contract anymore, meaning that the heart is not able to move blood nearly as efficiently meaning that blood is going to back up into the venous system. And when we have back up enough in the venous system, JVD can be present. The third thing that we see, again, is hypotension. Now, this is going to be the one that's going to be the most obvious in combination with your mechanism of action. These are things that you're going to really look for in an emergency setting. These two often come up on tests, but they're very difficult to see and hear in the emergent setting. Now, when it comes to hypotension, this should make sense because if our heart is not able to expand and contract because of the accumulation of fluid in the pericardial sac, then it's not able to propel blood forward. And if it can't prepare blood forward, then we have a decrease in our stroke volume, thus decreasing our cardiac output. So that is how we identify a cardiac tamponade in the emergent setting is using something like Beck's triad in combination with the mechanism of injury, giving us a high index of suspicion for a cardiac tamponade.